I mean, they could have built another Manhattan Bridge, couldn't they? And he didn't. He really aspired to do something gorgeous. So uh, it makes you feel that maybe you too could add something that would last and be beautiful. Thank you everyone so much for joining us. Um, my name is Mary Jane Shimsky. I am majority leader of the Westchester County Board of Legislators. And um, a number of elected officials from around New York State have decided to um, come together today to shine some light on the need for greatly increased infrastructure funding in this country and to shine a light on HR 3339, um, a congressional bill which would create this country's, I believe, fifth national infrastructure bank. Um, the need is just too vast to rely on appropriations alone. Uh, before we go into our New York specific arguments though, I understand that um, Congressman Danny Davis is somewhere nearby and Congressman Davis is from Illinois and he is the prime sponsor of HR 3339. Um, Congressman Davis, are you with us yet? Uh, this is Caleb Gilchrist. We're having technical problems with his um, computer right now, but he will come to my desk and um, say a few words. Uh, excellent, excellent. Let me go get him. Thank okay, you. okay. So while we're waiting for the Congressman, just want to point out that we've heard about $500 billion numbers, $1.1 billion numbers. The American Society of Civil Engineers estimates that the need for infrastructure uh, repairs and upgrades in this country is $5 trillion, not $1.1 trillion, $5 mm -hmm. trillion. And that number is probably on the low side. So we certainly have a lot of need. And as I said, what, um, we'll let uh, the Congressman address the national issue, and then we'll go into our specific state issues. Okay, now the Congressman can show on video because we okay. don't have a video on this computer, but he can sit down and speak. Okay, okay, that's, that's great. However, however we can connect with him is wonderful. Okay, how are you doing? Congressman Davis, it's great. I am to hear excellent. Your How are you? Very well, thank you. Thank you for joining us this morning. Well, I am pleased to do so, and just having a little bit of technical difficulty here, so that's why you're not able to see me. But uh, I am here, and I'm delighted to be here, and I am delighted to be a part of this conference and this discussion. Well, thank you very much. Um, for those of you who don't know, Congressman Davis is the principal sponsor of HR 3339 uh, to create the National Infrastructure Bank. Um, Congressman Davis, the floor is yours. You can talk uh, about how you came to be a champion for this issue. You could talk about the bill. You could talk about whatever you'd like. Well, thank you very much. And I, as I indicated a moment ago, I am excited and delighted and certainly pleased to be a part of this effort. H.R. 3339, the National Infrastructure Bank Act of 2021 would create millions of permanent high paying jobs. It is modeled on previous public banks which helped build much of our nation's infrastructure. Under Presidents George Washington, James Madison, John Quincy Adams, Abraham Lincoln, and Franklin Roosevelt, those banks helped finance the roads, bridges, canals, schools, hospitals, power systems, and railroads that made our nation the envy of the world. In fact, the last public bank, along with other sound policy initiatives, 
helped bring us out of the Great Depression and win World War II. The NIB would operate much like previous public banks. It will be capitalized with existing privately held treasury bonds exchange for preferred stock in the bank. Budget outlays covering a portion of investor stock divided will be fully reimbursed from the bank's earnings stream. As such, the bank will be budget neutral, require no new taxes, and create no new federal debt. It will have the authority to lend up to $5 trillion for urgently needed projects across the nation at very low interest rates. It would be complementary to President Biden and Vice President Harris's proposal and the Democratic House Majority Legislative Package to build back better our nation's infrastructure. So I want to thank my colleagues, Representative Bobby Reich, Representative uh, Jesus Garcia, and Representative Mundare Jones for sponsorship of H.R. 3339, the National Infrastructure Bank Act of 2021. Additionally, the state and local municipalities current and former elected officials who are in support of this bill. So I thank you for your effort on behalf of the National Infrastructure Bank Act. And as I've said many times, we need a $5 trillion investment in our infrastructure. Thinking small has resulted in the infrastructure crisis which are gripping our nation. And I'm very grateful for all of your actions. So we just have to keep up the fight. Sometimes you break off giant needs in ways that are not as giant as the need, but as long as you keep on coming, eventually you will get there. So let's never stop Let's keep fighting, and ultimately, we will indeed win. I thank you very much, and I am indeed pleased to be a part of this effort. Thank you so much, Congressman. It was great to hear from you. OK, um, with that, thank you so much, Congressman. You could stay on as long as you like, or if you have other things you have to attend to, that's fine as well. We're just so glad you were able to stop by. Thank you and carry on. Oh, will do, sir. Um, now that we have an idea of what we're talking about here with the infrastructure crisis in this country and what we need to meet it, which is a $5 trillion national infrastructure bank in addition to the appropriations that President Biden is trying to um, get through Congress. There's a New York State story as well to this. 9.9% um, of New York State's bridges are structurally deficient. The further upstate you go, the worse it gets. A larger number of bridges are, are what's called functionally obsolete, which means they're, they're not designed to handle the traffic they're handling at this point. Um, Approximately 11% of all of our mass transit rolling stock is past its useful life. We have billions, billions of dollars of need for things like water quality, school repairs and upgrades, and housing that is affordable for our workforce. Um, the creeping giant of the sleeping giant of problems is our sewer systems. And here in Westchester County, we already have some really, really troubling signs. And that's probably true of every place in the state that has sewer systems. Um, Hurricane Ida 
taught us so much about how far behind we are with storm resiliency and stormwater management. I could go on with many more issues, but um, we only have so much, so many hours in the day. So we are all here because we recognize the need is vast and the ability for, for governments to appropriate money is limited. So we need as a supplement this bank. Um, I am grateful to my Congressman Mondaire Jones for co-sponsoring the bill with Congressman Davis. And support is growing for this bill across the state. Uh, we have members of a number of local uh, city councils and county legislatures around the state on the call today. Um, last month, the New York State Association of Counties passed a resolution in support of the National Infrastructure Bank at its um, fall legislative conference. So we all recognize we the boots on the ground who, who have to deal with what happens when the roads fall apart, the bridges fall apart, the sewers fall apart. We know this is needed and we are starting to unite among ourselves and make our voices heard. Why don't we go to former New York State Assemblyman Felix Ortiz, used to be Assistant Speaker of the New York State Assembly. Um, Assemblyman Ortiz. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mary Jane, and thank you to all my colleagues on this uh, important uh, cross-state press conference. Uh, uh, it's very important that we continue to support HR 33339 in Congress and Congressman Davis, uh, to, who has been a, a real champion to ensure that uh, uh, more members of Congress continue to break rank from the traditional uh, mechanisms of politics that continue to be played out in Washington. Uh, and, and I also would like to thank uh, Mary Jane, you congressman, for stepping to the plate uh, to support uh, these measures as well. And at least we begin to see Congress people who uh, uh, are getting, <clears throat> getting the signal of what this, uh, why are we all together throughout New York State and why we are all together throughout the country. Let me just tell you why I support this uh, National Infrastructure Banking uh, in a couple of sentences, if I can. Uh, the, need, the need of this is everywhere throughout the country. Broadband access in New York uh, City is still un un unbelievable, low over 38% of all New Yorkers' households earning $25,000 or less have no high-speed home internet connection. 24% of the household in New York City metro area Serving 750,000 students don't have high-speed internet. Uh, you mentioned uh, Hurricane Ada, the last one that we had a few, uh, few, few weeks ago in September 1st. Well, guess what? Our sewer infrastructure cannot collect the amount of water that is already coming through New York City due to the fact of uh, if you walk, if you drive uh, through New York City, uh, you will find out all the horizon building that has been built in the last for four or five years. Uh, and the infrastructure that we have us in the sewer system uh, is not capable enough to hold all this water that we that go through it. According to a, a report in the Sunday uh, Washington Post, which highlight New Year's Day specific, the current bill in Congress will fund only 5% what is required to upgrade the nation energy transmission system. So my brothers and sisters on this call, we do have a lot of work to do, a lot of work to continue to step to the plate to convince our delegation of Congress and, you, and the two US Senator in New York State to do what is right, not for uh, a soundbite political uh, statement, but for our future generation. Lastly, uh, the, one of the reasons I support this bill is because two years ago, when I was a member of the New York State Assembly, I was the first legislator to introduce a resolution calling on Congress to support the national, national infrastructure banking. And, uh, and the resolution never went nowhere because our speaker, as you probably know by now, uh, they don't believe that this resolution should be put in on the agenda. But uh, lastly, on the second point is that this bill would not, uh, would not engage any task burn on the future generation to come. Thank you very much. May God bless you and the fight continue and let's do it together.
Thank you so much, Assemblyman Ortiz. Um, I'll, now, I'll now call on Thomas Carey, who is president of the Westchester Putnam Central Labor Body. Um, he is part of the Plumber, Plumbers and Pipefitters Union, which was one of the early supporters of the NIB. And um, he has his own story as to why this is so important. So Tom, why don't you take it away? Thank you, Mary Jane. You know, first I wanna welcome all my colleagues on the call today. And I also wanna welcome all of our elected officials who've been so helpful with you know, trying to get HR 3339 passed. I see many of you on here this morning and I really have to thank our majority leader, Mary Jane Shimsky for hosting this meeting. And the minute I mentioned this to Mary Jane, she took this like a running back on a football team and just ran right to the top with it. Mary Jane, I can't thank you enough. Uh, this, is, this is a phenomenal bill that we need to get across the finish line. I was talking to some people this morning. You know, there's some, a little bit of confusion going on in Congress right now. And I think what they're gonna realize when the time comes is that HR 3339 is the goal Oh, dear. Our... Okay. Did I lose you? You froze a little bit for about five seconds or so. All right. So, uh, you know, I want to thank you. And I also want to thank uh, our Peekskill board member, Mary G uh, Patricia Riley. Patricia, uh, along with Mary Jane, have been phenomenal. And Ruth Walter, I see you out there as well. I can't thank you guys enough because this resolution is absolutely necessary. You know, uh, at our national convention in San Diego last month, we passed a resolution to adopt HR 3339. Uh, and there was 3,600 members in attendance at that convention and it was unanimously adopted. So I can't stress the importance of getting this bill passed. And now is the time. Uh, I can't think of a better time than right now. So I just wanna thank everybody for your time and Mary Jane, keep up the great work. Thank you so much, Tom, and having labor in our corner on this. You are a very important stakeholder here, and we are definitely going to need labor support to get this across the finish line. Okay, our next speaker is Martin Simpson. Uh, he represents District 2 in the Albany County Legislature. All right, well, in the interest of time, I'm gonna speak very quickly, but I just wanna say that I'm glad that a lot of my colleagues from the Albany County Legislature are on board. We're gonna to have to do this many more times. So I think what we're gonna wind up doing is having members of the Albany County Legislature take turns along with members of the Albany City Common Council so that we all can be represented because this is clearly a need uh, that's uh, long overdue. Um, and it, sadly, uh, the need has actually accelerated by political events that heretofore uh, would never be anticipated, but we have to hit the ball where it lies, as they say in golf. And so we don't have a choice but to deal with what's on our lap. Um, you know, Albany is a historic city. Um, when, when the city of Albany succeeded Poughkeepsie as the capital of New York State in 1797, it already had a storied history going back to 1614. It was, Albany is the longest continuously charted city in the United States. And so obviously we have very significant infrastructure needs. As a matter of fact, uh, the, the rains that happened maybe two weeks ago, Thursday, actually uh, forced one of my neighbors out of their home for flooding. And we've recently had winds so strong even in Albany that they've taken rules and sides of, of houses. We've had horrific rains and you know the climate has really radically shifted. Um, and, and so you know I once had a gallery on Madison Avenue and uh, on, on, on 6th Avenue and 28th Street. Within the last two weeks the subway uh, on 28th Street was completely submerged underwater. That has never happened before. You know, these 500 year events are happening in rapid succession with greater intensity. We've had probably in the last three weeks, we've had uh, or four weeks, Henri, 
Ida, and then Nicholas. Um, the Northeast is a very old section. Albany is one of the first early uh, capitals uh, uh, of the country uh, in terms of the political infrastructure. And our needs are great, but New York State also uh, has, you know, pipes that go back to over a hundred years that as uh, Assemblyman Ortiz pointed out is beyond the capacity of our present structure to handle. So what's happening in Washington um, really exemplifies the need for what we're trying to do now because you can't really minimize the need and the resources that are need, that they need to be allocated to fit a certain problem. The pandemic of COVID in conjunction with the political direction that the country is taking um, has made it more urgent than ever before that we pass this needed legislation. And the importance of, of, of 3339 is that it will create an economic solution to the problems that have been exacerbated by COVID. If your job is to change beds in a hotel and you lose that job, where do you go? Albany is a city of less than 100,000 people. We have a large number of hotels. One of the hotels that I frequent, uh, the Renaissance, normally has a capacity of, of 80%. They've been reduced to a capacity of around 11%. And so many people who depended on their livelihood no longer have employment. And because this scourge is systematic, there's no place for them to retreat to. We, we, we find out that we have deficits in terms of people going to stores and there's a loss of toilet paper. People are, are gutting toilet paper. But what's even worse now is that our supply chain has been compromised. COVID has created an infrastructure in which we don't have sufficient truck drivers to move the freight from the ports. Then we also have the exacerbation of oil spills in California, which make it difficult for the, the, the fleet to deliver the stuff to the dock. So there's a supply chain that trickles down um, that causes unforeseen consequences on a, a very large level. 3339 is the necessary antidote for all of these problems. And you can't ticker around the margins and you can't fool mother nature. You can't have your head in the oven and your feet in the freezer and say on average, you're normal. It doesn't work that way. So I urge us to continue this fight. You know, I think that the benefits of, of 3339 are well lined out. And I think people don't, the average person doesn't have a grasp of how great the need is. We don't really- And that is why we are here, right, Merton? That is why we're here. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. And we thank you for bringing on so many of your colleagues from the Albany uh, legislature today. Is Assemblyman Burdick- um... There he is. No, I'm, he... uh, I'm here, Mary Jane. Assemblyman Burdick. <laughs> Hi, Assemblyman, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you, Mary Jane. and. Thank you for emceeing this. And I know that there are a lot of people who want to say a few words. And so I will be brief. And I want to first thank all of the advocates that are working to push this forward. It's obviously a heavy lift to try to get legislation through Congress, but there's nothing more vital than dealing with the uh, crumbling infrastructure that we have in this country. And whether or not we have a bipartisan infrastructure bill, whether or not we have further legislation, the National Infrastructure Bank concept is something that's brilliant and makes perfect sense. Because this is something that provides for a sustained and long-term solution to dealing with the infrastructure issues that face this country. And as a member of the assembly, uh, my role is to try to work side by side with the advocates and with my sisters and brothers in labor to try to get support in the New York State Assembly for a sign-on letter to go to 
the president and Congress saying, let's get this moving. Let's get this enacted. Let's get going on trying to restore, our, as I mentioned, our crumbling infrastructure. This is so important to the lives and, and the safety and health of the entire country. You know, we've seen in the past where we've had bridges that, that literally um, crumble and fall down. And we just cannot continue in that fashion with dealing with the critical needs of this country. So again, I wanna thank everyone for the work that you're doing. Mary Jane, thank you for the work you're doing within the Westchester County Legislature and working with other uh, county legislatures across the state. So again, thank you all to, for all you are doing to move this forward. And I don't mean to be rude, but I have two other uh, Zoom rallies and conferences that I'm also on. And again, thank you so much for what you're doing. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Okay, um, next we've got Murderer's Row here from Albany County. Uh, we'll now go to um, representative from District 7, Barora Efecoro. Con um, Assemblyman Efecoro, are you with us? Yes, thank you very much, uh, Mary Jane. Uh, I want to commend everyone that is here today and also for Met for putting this together. I mean, helping to put this together. Uh, from what I initially said on my response, uh, the press release, Albany, I live in Albany and I represent a district in Albany. I'm not sure if you guys can see me very well. Let me move around here. So I represent the seventh district in Albany and uh, I lived in New York City previously before moving to Albany. And the distance, uh, when you go by train, the distance you would spend basically around two hours on Amtrak, basically trying to get from New York City to Albany or from Albany to New York City. And in the 21st century that we currently live in, I believe we can cut that number significantly down with a speed rail, high speed rail from about two hours to 45 minutes. And as you all may be aware, Albany was recently rated as one of the, one of the best cities to live in, in the United States. And in New York State, the, the best city to live in the, in the state of New York. And uh, the jobs also are in New York City. So I see no reason why people are not able to live in Albany while they work in New York City. So if we are able to cut the, the travel distance down from two hours or two and a half hours for some to about 45 minutes or less than an hour, then that would be possible for people to actually live in Albany while they work in New York City. And I believe a national infrastructure bank would help to make this possible, to invest in our infrastructure, invest in our rail lines, our trains. We have uh, these high-speed rails in China. And if we are in competing with China for economic you know, opportunities, we have to improve on our infrastructure and we have to improve significantly, not just meet what China is doing, but surpass what China is doing. And that is why I'm very much in support of this national infrastructure view. Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank you so, so much, Legislator Efecora. Um, Thank you. you bring up something very important, which is it's not just about fixing what's broken. We have to get ready for the new technological advances of the rest of this century. And high speed rail is certainly a big part of that. So we thank you for shining light on that issue for us. Thank you very much. Um, is Sam Fine from District 6 of the Board of Legislators on at this point? There he is. I'm here. My name is Sam Fine. I represent the 6th District 
in the Albany County Legislature. I just want to thank uh, my colleague, Merton Simpson, uh, for organizing this, as well as everyone else, Mary Jean Shimsky, and everyone else who organized this important uh, press conference. And, you know, for me, infrastructure, um, you know, I think it's really one of the most important things. It's one of the things we often overlook, um, or we don't think about, we take for granted, but because of that, we've been underfunding uh, our infrastructure needs for years nationally. And it's something that has now, you know, really caught up with us. And now we're in a drastic situation where we have to take, you know, extreme actions. And, you know, I'm thankful that it looks like Congress, hopefully they get through the uh, infrastructure package, but we know that's not nearly enough. And we're going to need the National Infrastructure Bank to really both make up all of the, uh, you know, all the underfunding, everything, you know, the decrepit infrastructure that we haven't been funding and build towards the future. So I think that, you know, in investment in infrastructure can create a competitive economy for the future, can create a green economy, we can be leaders on that. I know a few of my colleagues have spoken about the city of Albany and, and like many old cities, you know, we have a lot of crumbling infrastructure, roads, bridges, we have very old water infrastructure, we have lead pipes, uh, feeding many of the homes. Of course, that's a health issue uh, for, for many children. Um, we have old heating systems that we need to upgrade to clean energy. We have old housing. We have vacant buildings throughout the city, housing crumbling. Um, and, and oftentimes these, these issues are more pronounced in lower income communities and in communities of color, like the, the district that I represent. And so, you know, I think we have a real opportunity to, to both you know, I mentioned competitiveness and a green economy and building for the future, but also to address a lot of the inequities in infrastructure that exist. And so, you know, things like housing, as I mentioned, are really important, building more housing, building affordable housing and green housing, public transit. Uh, Bararo, I thank you for mentioning um, high-speed rail, that, that's very important, but also our, you know, local public transit, whether it's subway system or a bus system as we have here in Albany, um, I've been pushing for to create our, make our bus system fare free, and I'd like to see a lot more investment as well in increased bus routes, um, in um, you know rapid bus transit, and you know other ways to you know promote um, promote public transit and have you know more people more people take the bus, have more walkable communities, and in greener and more sustainable communities. So you know all these issues are so much related. If we really want to create a better future for ourselves, have more sustainable cities, more sustainable communities. Um, infrastructure is really the key. And so this is so necessary. Uh, I think it's really important that we're all here today pushing the National Infrastructure Bank. Thank you so much, Legislator Fine. Is Joyce Love from the Albany Common Council on at this point? Yes, I am. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Joyce Love and I'm a member of the Common Council. And I represent, I represent the third ward. I am a proud lifelong resident of Albany. <clears throat> I can remember at times in my youth when the Arbor Hill neighborhood of Albany was thriving. Uh, not unlike the Greenwood district of Tul Tulsa, Oklahoma or the town of uh, Rosewood, Florida and so many other black sections of America. When I was in elementary school in Arbor Hill, had black doctors, lawyers, pharmacists, shoe stores, black milk, uh, clothing, men's stores, bakeries, and many professional businesses. Today, due to re redlining, gerrymandering, absentee landlords, and inadequate government support, Albany's inner city has been reduced to the answer in a jeopardy question in the city that amplifies urban blight. Several decades of neglect and exploitation can only be rectified by an infrastructure program that is equal to the deficiencies. House Bill HR 3339 at the level of the resource allocation uh, with, the, with the need. We will, I, we will pass a resolution supporting HR 3339 on the Common Council, and I will do anything in my power to see that this is implemented for Americans. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilwoman. 
We're now going to go back to Westchester County. We have a few more of our um, of our leaders, and to give a um, a perspective from one of our cities, I'll now call, call on Councilwoman from Peekskill, Patricia Riley. Thank you, Mary Jane, and thank you everyone for being here today. Yes, my name is Patricia Riley. I'm on the City Council in Peekskill, New York, which is another city in Westchester County. Um, we have passed a resolution to support our council several months back for HR 339, and I was very proud to bring that forward um, and making the public aware of what's going on and how we need to support this important uh, bill for our in infrastructure. The time is now to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure. We have global warming. We have seen what happens when our weather patterns change and shift and our infrastructure isn't prepared for it. Our council is talking about implementing uh, electric vehicles into our fleet of, city, um, uh, a fleet of city vehicles, but we have to make sure we have infrastructure to support that. I'm sure many other municipalities are talking about going green, getting more electric cars and buses, but we have to make sure that we have an infrastructure in this country that can support all the new electric vehicles. And that's a good thing that we're doing, but we have to have make sure that our infrastructure can support that. Um, we also um, want to bring with this HR 3339, this will bring good union paying jobs. Um, I've been a labor leader with the Lakeland Federation of Teachers in uh, Westchester County for many, many years. And when you have good union paying jobs um, in our country, building infrastructure, it's a win-win because we need to get America working again. We need to rebuild our infrastructure. We need to rebuild our economy. And that is why I support passing HR 3339. So we need to let's build back better and we need to do it now. So thank you very much, Mary Jane. I'm keeping it short. Thank you very much, Patricia. We'll be hearing from Patricia a little later. She's got statements from um, some of our leaders around the state who have not been able to, um, to attend but wanted to lend their support. Uh, but, but we will give her a chance to catch her breath. And now we'll call on Westchester County Legislator, Ruth Walter. Thank you so much, Mary Jane. Um, as majority leader on our board, Mary Jane has been a true leader on infrastructure. Um, she is a model to many of us for really digging into the details of uh, what it is we're investing in. And, you know, we're, we're proud on the board of how many uh, dollars we put into our inf infrastructure, but there's so much more to do. Um, I'm really excited to be involved in this um, effort to get the National Infrastructure Bank bill passed. Um, you know, just one uh, aspect of it uh, led in our drinking uh, water is a crisis of health and education. These, um, you know, effects of on a developing brain of lead are irreversible. And, you know, this is something that cities and towns, they need some overarching and, you know, directed infrastructure spending um, in order to, to bring us out of, you know, this, this dark um, place where, you know, some of our water is not safe to drink. Um, and so, you know, be, between all of the different um, high-speed rail, and um, broadband, there's so much to invest in. And we know that investment pays off and our economy will be stronger, our, our workforce will be stronger, our families will be stronger. And so the money is an investment, um, not tax dollars. It is uh, in a separate bank. And I'm really excited to, to advocate for this. Our board uh, led by uh, Mary Jane Shimsky passed a resolution in support of this um, last year. And we are we were unanimous and we will continue um, to, to work together in any way that we can um, in order to promote this. So thank you, um, Mary Jane. Thank you, everyone on this call. Um, good paying labor jobs is really important and we need to invest um, in this way. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ruth. Um, I, I'd now like to go back to um, Councilwoman Riley, who will be reading us statements from elected officials from other parts of the state. Okay, Mayor Jane, thank you very much. Um, this one is from David Donaldson, the chairman of Ulster County Legislature. And he states, 
We need HR 3339 to bring our nation's infrastructure into the 21st century. Creating a new national infrastructure bank will be an economic boost like no other in history. Too many of our roads, our bridges, our railroads, our bulkheads, and our airports have been neglected for too long. We also must meet the infrastructure needs to meet the demands of electric vehicles, clean energy production, as well as the flood control and stormwater management projects that climate change will bring. The next one that I have is from Councilman Yadanis Rodriguez from New York City. And he states, I am proud to stand in solidarity with the leaders gathered today in support of a national infrastructure bank as spelled out in Congressional Bill HR 3339. The ongoing infrastructure crisis demands that we think outside the box. This summer, we saw our subways give way to the heavy rainfall we experienced causing horrendous flooding that engulfed New York City. In Queens, the failure to build new infrastructure resulted in people dying in their apartments, said Council Member Yadanis Rodriguez, Chairman of the Transportation Committee. Generational flooding overwhelmed significant parts of the New York City subway systems. The price to fix and update our nation's infrastructure will cost well over $5 trillion and the National Infrastructure Bank is a start in the right direction. I am proud to be a co-sponsor of City Council Resolution 1432 alongside my colleague, Robert E. Cornegie, calling upon Congress to pass legislation establishing a national infrastructure, a national bank for infrastructure and manufacturing. Best Thomas Carita, communications director, that's, that supplied that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for reading those for us, Councilwoman. Um, there are two other people who I would like to recognize, one of whom is on this call, one of whom may be trying to get on the call and we're keeping an eye out for him. But um, on the call, we have Alfeka Mutardi, former senior economist from the IMF. She's a macroeconomist by trade, and she is one of a group of technical experts in various fields who have been behind this movement. Um, this is an, an organization and a movement that is grounded in the best 21st century research and facts that we can muster. And Alfec is the best, um, is one of the best examples of that. So thank you for being on. The second thing I do want to point out, and we are we are seeing if we can um, find him at the last minute, but just last week we got our first congressman from New York State to co-sponsor HR 3339. And that is my congressman, um, Mondaire Jones. Um, congressman Jones, as you know, um, is a freshman congressman, but he has begun taking leadership positions in the Democratic caucus. He has fast become a very um, well-known and well-respected member of that body and of the New York caucus. And having him as a co-sponsor at this point is a really great thing. And I, I hope that while he is the first New York congressperson to, to be a co-sponsor, I hope he is nowhere near the last. Um, so thank you very much, uh, Congressman Jones. Um, at this point, that concludes, I believe, our official program. Um, we still have I, Michael O'Brien. Oh, we do have Michael O'Brien. Michael O'Brien. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, on the count, Albany Common Council, I've been on the General Services Committee for my whole tenure. And uh, obviously, it's um, more mundane than, the, you know, the high speed rail. It's just simply the city streets, the parks, the, uh, the sidewalks, and not just, not just sidewalks, but other walking amenities that we've never had enough money to adequately maintain. Uh, and every year, every budget year, it's kind of a competition between 15 wards. Uh, obviously, uh, this would be a big help. And, you know, this is an enlightening thing. I obviously I support uh, President Biden's agenda of the uh, 
one trillion dollar by bipartisan infrastructure bill and the three point five trillion Build Back Better Act. But uh, I'm being constantly educated on the idea of an infrastructure bank, and I was surprised uh, to learn from the remarks that Congressman Davis made that uh, I knew it went back at least until Franklin Roosevelt. What I didn't know was this concept of infrastructure banks went back even much further back to the early days, some of the early administrations of, of our country. So it's not a radical idea, it's a common sense idea. And I applaud you for your efforts to get recognition for this and to push off ultimately for its adoption nationally. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for joining, joining us, Councilman. And um, at this point, um, do we have any other legislators who want to make comments? Yes, this is Carolyn yes. McLaughlin. Okay. I would like to make a comment. Mm -hmm. um, um, as a, I represent the District 1 in the Albany County Legislature and, current, and previously served as president of the um, Albany Common Council. So these are issues that we have um, been confronted with for, for decades. So to see a bill such as HR 3339, um, it really, it gives us hope that some of the issues that we um, con are confronted with here in Albany County um, can be addressed. Um, when I think of this bill, I think of jobs, jobs, jobs. And if you have jobs for people in your community and they are performing jobs that are rebuilding their community, then you're gonna have a sustainable community for our children and our families. You're talking about housing infrastructure. You're talking about an educational infrastructure. You're talking about waterway infrastructure. So if we can educate the community on what, an infra what infrastructure means and what it means to you, I think that we will see people in droves out in the streets and contacting their um, uh, members of the legislatures to um, get on board because this is something that is, there's no city, there's no state that will not be positively impacted by the National Infrastructure Bank. So if we don't get this message out, people, uh, they have to be educated in plain English as to what this means and what it means to you as an individual. I will do whatever I can as I listen to everyone today and listen to Congressman Davis. I am all the more energized to do what needs to be done to make this a reality. Thank you so much, Merton. And I continue to look to you as one of my leaders um, on this issue here in Albany County. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Legislator McLaughlin. Um, as you pointed out, this is a problem that was decades in the making, but it's definitely coming to a head now. And now is the time where we're going to need big action to get a handle on it. With that, unless someone has anything else to say right now, we will um, adjourn and um, onward and upward. <laughs>